hello students welcome to my youtube channel in this video lecture i will be discussing the concept of rank and nullity of a linear transformation so before starting let us understand the definition of range so we will start from the definition of range so in order to define range i will be considering two vector spaces so if v over the field f and w over the field f be any two vector spaces okay are vector spaces and i have defined a mapping t from v to w which is a linear transformation so this then the image set of v under t is the range of t right so we can write it like that range of t is nothing but all the images of v where we are coming from a right so that is the definition of range of t now one of the important theorem is that we need to prove that that range is again a subspace so the theorem is the theorem states that if t is a transformation linear transformation which is defined from v to w where v is a vector space over the field f and again w is also vector space over a field f and this is a linear transformation then so we have to prove that range of t what is range of t that is t of v so i have to prove that this is a subspace so let us start this since we know that what is range of t so we need to mention the definition the proof that range of t that is t of v right this is the collection of all the vectors w right where w is nothing but t of v and this small v is coming from for all small v is coming from capital v right so this is the definition of range of t and we are given that t is a linear transformation from v to w right is a linear transformation is a linear transformation so and any v coming from capital v right this implies t of v will belongs to w right and what is t of v that is w by the definition right so this is w belongs to small w belongs to capital w right so therefore therefore range of t belongs to w so now we will be choosing two vectors so let from the range space that is let w1 and w2 be any two vectors that are coming from range of t now that is how we prove the subspace now we know that then then we know that w1 belongs to range of t now if w1 belongs to range of t what does it mean it means there exists some vector v1 let us suppose that there exists a vector v1 that is coming from capital v such that t of v1 is equal to w1 right again using this star right we are using this definition and similarly similarly if w2 belongs to range of then this implies obviously there must exist some vector let us write it as v2 coming from capital v such that t of v2 will be small w2 right so that is by the definition now i will be considering scalars right from the field so let alpha and beta be scalars that are coming from field what i am interested to prove is that alpha times w1 plus beta times w2 this this must belongs to range of t so if i have proved this thing then it means it is a subspace now we know that if alpha and beta are coming from field and v is already a vector space right so this means alpha times v1 plus beta times v2 they must come from capital v why because v is a vector space now this means this implies t of alpha v1 plus beta v2 is equals to alpha times t of v1 plus beta t of v2 so i have applied t and i have got alpha times t of v1 plus beta times t of v2 right and what is t of v1 again by the definition this is w1 and t of v2 is w2 so this is alpha w1 plus beta w2 right so applying t you are getting this so this means this thing this must belongs to range of t right and hence it is a subspace now a note note is that 
range of t is also sometimes referred as range space range space so these are one and the same things moving on to the next definition that is the null space or this is also called as kernel so null space or kernel okay again the same definition uh, definition is on the same lines that if we are considering any two vector spaces over the field f right and we will be considering a linear transformation so let t be a linear transformation which is defined from v to w right this is a linear transformation over the field f these are the vector spaces okay over the field f now then then the set of all those vectors all those vectors right and the vectors will be coming from capital v in capital v whose image under t is zero whose image under t is zero right so that is called the null space or the kernel right so i can write that null space of t or it is denoted as capital n of t this is nothing but the collection of all the vectors coming from capital v such that on applying t they are going to zero and of course this must belongs to w the zero of w right so again i will be proving that this kernel is also a subspace so theorem that kernel is a subspace so on the similar lines as we have proved that the range of t is a subspace so i will be proving that kernel is a subspace right so again proof we know that what is kernel or it is generally denoted as n of t right so n of t is nothing but the collection of all the vectors coming from v right whose images goes to zero and this is w and of course you will be saying that let t be a linear transformation which is defined from v over the field f to w over the field f where these are the vector spaces and this function is a linear transformation right and then mm -hmm. easily see this thing that n of t is contained in v right because this is a vector v this is w and uh, what i am saying is null t is basically vectors from this v which are going to zero okay so obviously this n of t is contained in v right so so in order to prove this to be a subspace i will be considering two vectors v1 and v2 coming from n of t right so and of course alpha and beta from field now i'll be taking the linear combination but before that i will be applying the definition so if v1 belongs to n of t so by the definition of nt that is the kernel that is t of v1 must go to zero and similarly t of v2 must also go to zero now because v is a vector space so it means so this implies alpha times v1 plus beta times v2 alpha times v1 plus beta times v2 must belongs to v now apply t so what does this mean this means t of alpha v1 plus beta v2 this is what alpha take alpha outside t of v1 plus take beta outside t of v2 now by the definition t of v1 is 0 t of v2 is 0 right so overall this thing is 0 so t of something goes to 0 so this something must belongs to kernel so this implies that alpha of v1 plus beta of v2 belongs to the kernel and what is the kernel that is n of t right now before concluding this lecture i would like to add two more definitions that is the definition of a rank and null t right so before discussing rank and nullity this is very simple again i will be writing let t be a linear transformation which is defined from a vector space v over the field f to w over the field f these are vector spaces all right and this is any linear transformation okay. now we are aware of the concept of range space as well as the concept of kernel now if you take the dimension of range space and if you take the dimension of kernel so the dimension of kernel is said to be the nullity right and the dimension of range space is said to be the rank okay and one very important theorem in linear algebra is 
that if t is any linear transformation which is defined from v to w right and if i say v is any finite dimension let us have a dimension n right then the theorem states that rank plus nullity is equals to dimension of v so this is a very very important theorem we will be applying this theorem in the next lecture and we'll be discussing few questions how to apply this rank nullity theorem okay so i hope you have understood this video lecture thoroughly so for more such video lectures subscribe to my youtube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon thank you